Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We praise you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on up a little louder, people of God. Lift your hands and your voices. Come on. Don't just do the church thing. Come on. If you have a personal relationship, lift that. We bless you, Jesus. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, raise that. Thank you, Lord. Everybody raise that. Thank you. Come on and say thank you, you Lord. Come on, raise it and say, I just want to thank Come on, raise that. Everybody lift your voice and say, thank you, Lord. Thank Tell them, you, Lord. We just lift our voice and say, thank That's right. You, it's not too complicated to give them thanks. Just lift your hands and from your spirit say thank. When I don't have the words to adequately describe how I'm feeling concerning you, I can lift my hands and say, I just want to say it. To thank you, Lord. Come on, tell them. Look up to heaven and say, you've been so good. Tell them, you've been so A little more. A little more. A little more. Come on, everybody. Say, you've been so good. Tell the Lord. Yeah. Been better than me that I can be to myself and say, been Oh, good. Say, I just want to thank you, Lord. Has he been your friend? Come on, lift your voice and praise him. I said, you've been my friend. You've been my, my friend. Lord, I love you today. Say, you've been my friend. Hallelujah. When everybody else walked away, you've been right there. Lord, I love you for sticking right by my side. And you've been a friend. Oh, my friend. Yes, sir. And my response is, tell them, say it. To thank. You, Lord. One more time. Lift your hands and say, thank you, Lord. Tell them, say, thanks. You. Lord, I love you. I appreciate you. Come on and raise your voice and say, thank you, Lord. Let heaven hear you. Yes, sir. You, Lord. Come on, from your belly, from your spirit, lift your hands and say, thanks. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. Lord, I love you and I appreciate you. Everybody say, I just want. Can we sing it again? Let's sing it again. I just want. Lift your voice and say, I just want to thank 
Anybody want to tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my strength. You've been my strength. Strength like no other. Yeah, I just. One more time, say, I just want. Lord, uh, lift your hands and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Woo! I got yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Clap your hand real fast and say, thank you, Lord. Come on, old school church. Thank God no shot time. Thank you, Lord. I love her. Thank you, Lord. You've been good. Do I have a witness in this room who can say you've been good? You been good, been better to me than I can be to myself. Yes, you have. You been good. You been good. I wish I had forty people who can wave your hand and say you been good. You made a way. Shake yourself in this room. We come for an hour of power. You made a way. You made a way, you made a way where there was no way. You made a way. You made a way. You made a way. Do I have anybody who can lift your hands and say, You brought me out? Brought me out. You brought me out. You brought me out without a doubt. I can lift my hands and say, you brought me out. I wish I had a praise in here. You brought me out. You brought me out. Look down your row and say, he brought me out. Look at somebody else and say, he brought me out. I was broke, but he brought me out. I was downtrodden, but he brought me out. I was weary, wounded, and sad, but he brought me out. He brought, brought me out. I want you to lift your hands and give God that he brought you out, pray. I know it's still morning time, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus, y'all don't mind if we praise a little bit, do you? When I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all he's done for me my soul my soul my soul look at somebody and say i owe god this praise after all the hell i've been through in 2022 i'm alive to see 23 and i'm gonna give god the praise he's worthy of I need you to touch three people and say he's worthy of it. He's worthy. I said find somebody and tell them he's worthy. I don't need nothing deep. I don't need nothing spectacular. All I can look back over my life and say if it had not been. I need a church. Come on TWC. Wake up in here. I said if it had not been for the Lord on my side. God bless you. It's never too early to dance. No, 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 because some people call it emotional. They call it emotionalism. But I'm praising the God who made my emotions. And the Bible tells me, let everything that have breath praise you, the Lord. I ain't going to coerce you. Excuse me. I'm not going to coerce you. I ain't going to push you. But I'm going to give you 30 seconds.
to give God the greatest praise that you can muster up right now. Go for it. Give him glory. Give him glory. I got two dancers already. I was. I knew AP was going to dance. You can't tell it because he covered me in his blood. And I'm going to praise him with all my might. I'm going to give him the glory. You ain't going to coerce me. You ain't going to remind me. I almost lost my mind, but I kept my praise. Almost lost my mind, but I still got to praise. My praise reminds me that I'm still victorious. Nah, nah, nah. Look at somebody. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, y'all ain't loud enough. Look at them and say, neighbor, if you're not dead, that means God's not done. Reach behind you and say, neighbor, if you are still living, if you are still breathing, God is not through with you yet. I need you to shake somebody's hand and say, he's just getting started. I said, he's just getting started. I got a witness. I said, he's just getting started. If you can't stand how I look right now, don't wait till the end of the year because he's just, he's just getting started. He that begin a good work in you shall put, I feel the Holy Ghost. Look at somebody say he's just getting started. No more I, but the Christ. I feel my granddaddy on me. No more I, but the Christ that lives. We're so excited. We're so excited about what God is doing in, the, in, in, in our midst. And I want to, glory to God. Now, 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 now hear me well, especially to those who are visiting. It wouldn't be TWC if there wasn't a consistent praise in the room. Thank you. It would not be a TWC event, which is reaching across borders and is expanding to more than TWC, but it wouldn't be a TWC event if there was not a praise in the room. Prayer, power, and praise in the word is what this ministry is built upon. And we thank God for what God is doing in his people. Now we got all the kinks, still working all the kinks worked out. We was a little reserved last night because we're trying to figure, fill out the space. But now this is a sanctuary and not a mortuary. And we're going to give God the praise that he's worthy of. Glory to God. Do me a favor, and we're going to move forward, and we're going to put our preacher up. Let's praise God for the visionary of this conference. Y'all 
Y'all ain't loud enough. Come on. Let's praise God for the one in whom stands by his side. The fragrance of the Way Church and Joy Fest Conference. If you so honor, you reap honor. And we honor them. And there is no way that you can be a reaper of honor if you don't do it with a pure heart. Not jealousy, wishing it was you. Because you've received your reward already. Glory to God. And so, and so I just wanted to make sure I said that because a lot of times in, 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 in our church world, there's a lot of jealousy. There's a lot of jealousy that, that, that moves around uh, among us. We have a crab mentality. And if our name is not called and, uh, and, and, if, we're in, and if we're not involved on a normal uh, basis, we feel like we're being overlooked or feel like, you know, maybe if I do this, maybe I can receive the same thing. But let me tell you something. Holding that position comes with great opposition. And you have to have the grace for the assignment. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And uh, where God leads, he feeds. And where he guides, he provides. And I am grateful to be a part of a moving, growing organism to be a part of Joy Fest 2023. Aren't you? Aren't you excited? Amen. All the leaders of the Way Church, we acknowledge you. We're going to move forward, and we'll do more on a formal basis tonight. We're getting ready to introduce my big brother, who's been my brother for years, whom I've gleaned from um, outside of church, inside of church. And um, his, his ministry has always been known, but as of lately, it's taken the world by storm. And uh, he's definitely graced for the assignment. And I love, and I'm, uh, I'm going to read this, but I definitely we want to. I'm going to read this because it's due you. Uh, yes, it is. It's due you. We're not going to do this, Pastor Brown. Uh, but um, he's been a, a light and inspiration to me personally. Uh, there's not a time, well, there were, was a time because he was so busy. But as of recent, there's not a time that I could call and he not stop what he's doing to talk and have a conversation, whether it be about preaching, whether it be about etiquette, whether it be about study habits. He's that kind of brother. And he does not have to be on the ticket to show up to support. And that is absolutely amazing in this day to find someone that would do such a thing. Pastor Brown, John D. Brown the third, is the senior pastor of the Genesis Church, also known as the Birthing Place in Gastonia, North Carolina. Pastor Johnny Brown was born and raised in Georgetown, South Carolina. He is the husband of the lovely and anointed lady Rachel Marie Brown of Florence, South Carolina. That's right. He's the father of one son who happens to bear my name, Kenneth. He is the youngest of four siblings and blessed to be the son of Mother Estelle and the late John Brown. Pastor Brown converted at a young age, called to the ministry at the age of four. Pastor Brown is unusually anointed young man. He's obtained his Bachelor of Arts in Educational Studies with a minor of history and is a candidate for the Masters of Divinity. Currently, Pastor Brown serves as a middle school social studies teacher of the Gaston County Schools. Pastor Brown received his license as a gospel preacher in 99 at Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church and was ordained an elder in 2005. He is an internationally known evangelist and a renowned conference preacher. Pastor Brown is the founder and the senior pastor of the Genesis Church of Gastonia, North Carolina. He and his church are in covenant with the Christian Covenant Fellowship of Ministries under the leadership of Bishop Michael Blue. Who has now become your bishop as well. Blessed with a sharp 
bold and uncompromising delivery. The word of God is ignited by his utter dependence on the Lord, compassion for souls, and his determination to hold fast to integrity. The eccentric preaching and teaching style of Pastor Brown has transformed the lives of thousands of men, women, boys, and girls. Pastor Brown is continually pressing toward the mark. Everyone, let's prepare our hearts and our minds to receive the ministry of Pastor Johnny Brown. Can we make a noise in the room? Amen, amen, amen. Jesus, we come and we thank you for your mercies and your grace. Thank you for your love and your kindness. You have been faithful, and for that we are grateful. And we thank you that your faithfulness leads to our fruitfulness. And we decree and we declare that we shall be fruitful all year long. For the rest of this year, we thank you that we shall produce on a higher level greater dimension. Thank you that you expand our bandwidth. Thank you that you exceed our expectations because our expectations are found in you. Thank you for the place in which we stand is holy ground. Thank you for this solemn assembly that you have called and caused to convene and converge here in the city of Raleigh, North Carolina under the canopy and banister title and name of Joy Fest. We thank you because you're going to deposit something in us that's going to set us up for the rest of our lives. We give you the glory. Now, Father, as we stand to declare your word for these few fleeting moments, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would have your precious way. You'd have your sweet way have your great way as always I yield my members to you I surrender my will I give you my anatomy and mobility I surrender my will at times my stubborn will at times my obstinate will as always I say my will I give to you I will do what you say do please use me Lord to show someone the way and enable me to say that my storage is empty I am available unto you. It's in the matchless, marvelous, mighty, and majestic name of Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. If you believe God and agree with that prayer, clap your hands. Hallelujah. Come on, clap a little better than that. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice and love on the Lord for the next about 10 seconds. Throw your voice like an arrow. Hallelujah. Right before you're seated and possibly settled, would you help me honor the Lord for the visionary, the man of God, my brother, and one of my closest friends. Let's thank God for Pastor Marcus Scott, everybody. Amen. Come on, let's honor the Lord for Lady Scott. Amen. Come on, smile at your neighbor and give the Lord a hand clap of praise for your neighbor. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen to God. I do honor the Lord for my lovely wife in her absence, Lady Rachel Brown. And I celebrate her. I certainly honor and celebrate all of the gifts to the body of Christ and to the world that's represented in here most of which I do consider to be brothers and friends. And so I am extremely honored and grateful to God for all those that are in your rank and position. We do thank the Lord. Thank God for uh, the array of Christian Covenant Fellowship ministry representation that we have in the room. Amen. And we thank the Lord for, for them. Thank God for our Bishop William Young, amen, who is going to tear us to shreds. 
Amen. I'm glad. I'm glad you all got me out the way. I've been taught that uh, you don't play on the track when a train is coming. Amen. Praise God. But uh, we're honored of the Lord. Certainly, Bishop and Pastor Bellamy and the Bellamy family. Thank God. Thank God for Pastor Fred Folstead. Amen. Thank God for Pastor Jonathan Mintz. Amen. And certainly to all of the local leaders and the assistants and the pastors of the Way Church, we honor the Lord for you all. Those that drove from Gastonia, God bless you. Elder Hartage and Minister DeKayon, praise God. To the band and the audiovisual ministry, thank God. Uh, let's go expressly into the word of God just a few fleeting moments uh, the gospel of Matthew chapter number 9 verse number 17 amen Matthew 9 and verse 17 and uh, I promise not to be long this is a an exhaustive text for two reasons people can preach it and have preached it way better than I and I have attempted to before uh, but it's exhausted in that there's so much more to it. Amen. And uh, Matthew 9 and verse 17 I want to pull on the NIV version. If you found it and you're physically able would you stand with us? Certainly to Elder Hicks our Expediter, Amen. Let's praise the Lord for him. And uh, this is my first um, outside assignment for 2023. Amen. So I believe this is something that is not only being preached to you, thank God, but I believe that it's word for me as well. Matthew 9, 17 out of the NIV version reads like this. Neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the consequences is that the skins will burst and the wine will run out and the wine skins will be ruined no they pour new wine into new wine skins and both are preserved preserved. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank the Lord. I want to entitle this lesson today, The Skin You're In. The Skin You're In. Look at somebody and say, The Skin You're In. going to set my timer for about 35 minutes and uh, we'll try to squeeze it in that. Look at somebody else and say the skin you're in. Brothers and sisters, it is important that we understand uh, that environments matter, surroundings matter, and atmospheres are crucial. Ask yourself one simple question, and that is, if I'm not being as productive as I could be, what kind of skin am I in? If I'm not producing on the level that I should be producing, then ask yourself, what type of environment 
what type of advice and what type of atmospheres have I subjected myself to? Because brothers and sisters, atmospheres are so important that before God created man, before he created human beings, before he gave us animals or fish in the sea, what he did was he created atmosphere and environment. He did not create fish until water was there. He did not create birds until firmaments were there. And he did not create us until the earth was settled and there was produce and topography so that we could live, remain, reside, and be productive. And so, brothers and sisters, sometimes you have to create the right atmosphere first before you can create the substance or anything substantive. Sometimes you have to make sure that you have the house and the living room together before you move in. Sometimes you have to make sure you have the credit together before you purchase it. Because these things will hinder your productivity if it is not together. Uh, if you build it, I don't have the time, but if you build it, they will come. <laughs> amen, amen. And so environments and atmospheres matters. What are you doing? I'm working on the environment. We don't have the membership yet, but I'm creating the environment. I don't have the money yet, but I've got the business plan because uh, I'm creating the firmaments before I go after the birds. Come now, church. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 don't have the, I don't have the money for it yet, but I'm sitting down and I'm getting the things together because atmospheres matter. One of the things that I believe that we must understand concerning atmospheres is, Pastor Scott, that atmospheres matter so much until we understand that God is responsible for the release of the blessing. God is responsible for the release of a miracle. If and when there are miracles that will take place in the midst of this joy fest, look at somebody and tell them, I decree and declare miracles this week. No, no, no. Where's the saints of God? I decree and declare blinded eyes will open. I be believe and decree and declare that the lame will walk. That I decree and declare salvation will come. That we'll have to utilize the pool in the hotel to baptize people in the name of Jesus. I, I believe that folk will be filled with uh, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I believe in me. We didn't gather here because we wanted to have church. You can look at YouTube and dance in your own living room. You can, you can pull up a video and shout in your own bedroom. We didn't come to show off our attire and how good we look, but we've been fasting and praying and laying before the Lord and saturating the ballroom that we are in that Although they may have had a party last month, they're going to have glory this month. And, and the reason being is because we are anticipating miracles, miracles. Y'all not happy, church. I said miracles. I believe, you may be seated if you can. I believe that when miracles take place, you have to understand that it's God that releases it. It has nothing to do with you or I or who's at the microphone or who's waving their hands. We use oils and handkerchiefs and cloths and all of these things, but uh, there is no power in the cloth. There is no power.
power in my hands necessarily. But if there is a release of a blessing and if there is a release of a miracle, it has to come from God. It is God that is responsible for the release of the blessing. But you and I are responsible for the atmosphere. God will never set in atmosphere. No, 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 no. God is responsible for the release of the blessing, but you and I are responsible for creating an atmosphere for God to move and for God to be glorified. I'm here to tell you that could it be that the reason why some people have not received their miracle, it isn't because God has lost his power, but could it be because the the people have lost their desire to set the right atmosphere. We're concerned and preoccupied with titles and positions. We are concerned and preoccupied with who is in the room and who has the mic. And we are concerned and preoccupied with who is up and who is singing and who the person we don't like and who is this person think they are that then came in here and think that they're running stuff. We are preoccupied with the wrong thing and it hinders atmosphere. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it hinders atmospheres uh, and so brothers and sisters atmospheres uh, are so important uh, that the case study, I only have two case studies and I'm going to let it go uh, uh, the case study of course is in Matthew 10 which is in the chapter after Matthew 9 where we read in chapter 10 of Matthew the scripture says uh, that a prophet Bishop Young uh, is without honor save in his own home and the reason being is because of familiarity hindering the operation of the gift that God has placed in somebody because your familiarity can hinder your reception your perception can hinder your reception and that's a twofold thing because brothers and sisters sometimes we hinder our own perception sometimes we hinder how people perceive us by our actions of immaturity so you can't get mad if they don't receive you because you've done silly things that hindered the way they perceive you that's why you can't post everything on Facebook that's why you can't give subliminal messages because you've got these photos and now you want to be a prophetess on Sunday but you want to dress like a hoochie on Friday of last week you just shared a status with you cussing people out subliminal messages about your church and what you don't like you done shared another pastor talking about child I need to go visit that church but now when it's your time to get the mic you wondering why the people don't receive you right you were just on the beach in a teeny weeny skinny bikini and now you want to lay hands on me and prophesy so now your reception is off because you've hindered your perception can't hear nobody. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and don't think this ain't a biblical concept uh, because even Jesus said, whom do men uh, say that I am? Y'all not helping me. Uh, look at your neighbor and tell him I'm not controlled by the opinions of others. Uh, but I do need to know what people are saying about me now. Uh, it's a problem if everybody say you nasty. It's a problem if everybody say uh, that you mean. And uh, It's a problem uh, if everybody look at you and think you a homosexual maybe you need to uncross your ankles uh, brother y'all him it's a problem if everybody think you a lesbian huh? maybe you need to come out them timberland boots and wear something to look <laughs> all right and so brothers and sisters on that end you may be seated on that end brothers and sisters it is a twofold thing we can affect our reception because of our
our actions that hinder our perception. But then the other thing about it is some people, uh, because of their lens, and their lens have been shaped through several things, what they see anybody through uh, can be distorted so they can't receive you. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, I had a student that was in my class years ago. I think maybe about the second year of me teaching. And I didn't understand why this young lady just was acting crazy. She was acting a monkey. And I thought it was me, but I found out through the counselor, maybe about six months of her being Freddy Krueger and Jason in my classroom, I found out through the counselor that the cologne that I was wearing happened to be a trigger for her because somebody had mishandled her and the guy that mishandled her had on the same cologne. So every time I got close to her, her perception of me got destroyed started not because of what I did but because of trauma and drama that happened in her past and I know we're the holy church and I know we sanctify and we speak in tongues but some of y'all need to understand that there's some deep seated issues and the reason why folk can't receive right is because their lens has been distorted and that ain't no demon we can't cast that out we can't put no oil on that some folk need to have a conversation and let's talk about the reason why you don't like new people let's talk about the reason why you have an issue with when other people come in that can go for it because it's a self-esteem issue Uh, hallelujah I've got 24 minutes let's uh, let's get through this perception and so uh, what happens is it will uh, it can literally uh, stifle your productivity and your creativity because you are not in an environment of honor Oh my, you're not in an environment of honor. A prophet is without honor in his own home. And so, uh, the other example, Lord have mercy. The, the second case study, if I will, are you still here, brothers and sisters? The second case study, uh, if I will, that deals with the importance of environments uh, becoming conducive and being uh, uh, necessary for miracles is found in Matthew 14. Mm -hmm. Matthew 14, you, you know that particular story of the feeding of the 5,000 men uh, plus women and children. Now, brothers and sisters, we shout, Pastor Faustin, about the fishes and bread uh, being broken and fed, feeding and multiplying, but that was not the first miracle. Bishop Bellamy, the first miracle was a miracle of environment because the scripture says that Jesus went out into the desert. Now we know that what qualifies and quantifies a place as a desert is that there is no life there. There is no productivity there. There is no topography there. That's what qualifies it to be a desert. But the scripture says when they came to Jesus and said send them away because we don't have money to feed them and we don't have anything to give them. Jesus looks at them and says alright don't send them away sit them down on the green grass in groups of 50 come down church because if they're in a desert that means there is no grass there but Jesus says before I feed you I want to make sure that the environment and the atmosphere is right before I can produce this miracle I need to make sure that I change the environment to a place that is conducive to produce multiplication and miracle in your life and can I prophesy to you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor God said he's going to do it in a desert place 
I came to preach to about 50 of y'all in here to tell you you don't have to pack up and move to Atlanta. You don't have to move to New York. You don't have to move to a metropolitan or a cosmopolitan. God said I can do it for you right in the country. I can do it for you in a desert place. I'll send a presiding bishop all the way to a church that's in Wendell. Where is Wendell? I want to tell you that God can cause grass to grow in your desert. You don't got to find grass. God said in this season, I'm going to cause grass to find you. I want you to look at your neighbor right in their face and say, neighbor, 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 get ready because the grass is getting ready to find you. It is, it is a miracle of environment. Hey, on your way down to your seat, shout it down your row and say he can do it in a desert place. Hallelujah. Come on and I see ya. I said he can do it in a desert place. I said he can do it in a dry place. He can take your desert and cause grass to grow. And that'll be a sign that I'm getting ready to exceed your expectation. He looks over at his disciples in that same, in that same chapter where he talks about about a prophet is without honor. Elder Hart, and she looks at his disciples and says to them, if you go somewhere and you're not welcome, don't fuss them out. Don't get an attitude. Don't take 10 minutes of your message talking about how dead they are. He said, shake the dust pastor off your feet don't return again use it as a testimony and he says what I want you to do is you've got to be cognizant of the fact that there's another assignment but what I don't want you to do is take the dust of your previous assignment into the new assignment so shake the dust off shake that off because if you don't shake that off you're going to be mad at the next assignment if you don't shake that off you're going to have anger in the next place so don't you carry no dust from your previous assignment that hurt you from your previous ministry that wounded you from your previous relationship that scarred you shake that off there you gave me the damage but I'm leaving the dirt and I'm going to go to the next assignment hallelujah because there's another assignment church I gotta quit but tell somebody there's another assignment don't you get bogged down in what didn't work Carlton there's another assignment that you got to be cognizant from and the new assignment didn't hurt you no no the new assignment didn't hurt you no no the new relationship didn't hurt you you can't make Jimmy suffer for what Jeffrey did no 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 it did not hurt you hallelujah shake the dust off why do you think God told Moses take off your shoes because the place in which you stand is holy why do you think God told Moses to take his shoes off before he went back to Egypt it's because if Moses grew up in the house of Pharaoh and got Egyptian education then that means he got Egyptian clothes and that means he wore Egyptian shoes so he said before I can use you I need you to take off Egypt because I'm not going to anoint your shoes I'm going to anoint your feet your shoes is what they gave you but your feet is what I created you with and I'm going to take you back to the original intent so dear brothers and sisters he says shake the dust off and return use it as a testimony and so brothers and sisters uh, it is very important that we embrace the concept uh, of environments and atmospheres. Uh, it's not only a law of the spirit, but of course, it's also a law of nature. Uh, you can take a 
fish for an example, Bishop Bellamy, and you take a fish out of the right atmosphere, you put fish and you put him on land, and that fish will be flapping and struggling, you know. Good, poor fish, just flapping and struggling. But you can take that same fish that was flopping and flapping on dry ground and drop him back in the right environment. And his genius will emerge. He'll start swimming and sailing and gliding. What happened? It was the right atmosphere. And brothers and sisters, some of you need to reevaluate your surroundings. You need to reevaluate who you got around you. Who's on your board? Who's on your staff? Who do you consider to be friends? Who do you tell your secrets to? And you wondering why how it got out? Well, if it got out, then maybe if I only showed you the screenshot, and if others got the screenshot, then deduction is you must have sent it. And so you've got to evaluate that because if you're not as productive as you need to be, you need to ask yourself, what kind of skin am I in? And some of us, hallelujah, there's a breakthrough here because some of us, God says, we've been holding on to people out of a distorted sense of loyalty to relationships at the risk of missing out on destiny mm -hmm. because there are two categories either they are a part of your destiny or they are a distraction it ain't no more either destiny or distraction and some of us have been holding on to people and God has revealed to you their motives he has shown you their agenda but Maya Angelou said it like this when people show you who they are believe them believe them hallelujah and so brothers and sisters look at somebody and tell your neighbor whoever I gotta shake off in this season tell them I'm gonna shake it off I'm not holding on to no sense of loyalty because all oh, you know they had my back when I was a child they brought me through they were there for a season and for a reason but you're trying to make somebody permanent that God just used for a season <laughs> the skin, the environment. So now, in the last 10 minutes of this little message, uh, that becomes the issue of the entire text. The entire text is an issue of environment. The entire text is an issue of atmospheres and surroundings. There are three things that we'll highlight, the ridicule, the redemption, the revelation. Now, the context of the text, Pastor Faustin deals with showing us an example of a paralyzed man who has the right friends who carry him into his healing. You understand that they tore the roof off. We're talking about having the right skin around you, having the right environment. This is the whole issue of the entire text, that if this man did not have the right friends that would not allow him to be comfortable being crippled, Pastor Bellamy, they would not allow him to get his paralysis to be permanent. They said, whatever we got to do, we love you too much to let you stay paralyzed and crippled. So you need to have the right environment of people that will say, we're not going to let you stay crippled. I know you don't want to hear from me. I know you don't like it. But I'm getting ready to show up and let you know that if I got to put you on my shoulder, I'm getting ready to carry you into the presence of the Lord. It is hermeneutically a depiction of a generation that is being carried into the presence of Jesus. 
on four shoulders. I don't know what their friends' names were, but I know for us that we got carried into the revelation of Messiah on the shoulders of four men, and their names were Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And just like these four men, they dropped us into the presence of Jesus. And when this man gets into the presence of Jesus, Jesus looks at him and says, son, your sins are forgiven. Come down, church. You're not happy about it because you bougie. But I'm glad, hallelujah, that when he saw me, he told me, be of good cheer. I'm glad that when I got into his presence, I didn't feel worthless, but he made me feel worthy. He knew I was paralyzed. He knew I was crippled, but he told me that even on my crippled bed, be of good cheer, because the issue of your paralysis is not physiological, physiological, but the issue of your paralysis is a sin issue. So let me forgive your sin so that I can heal your legs. Come down, church. And so he told me your sins are forgiven. Tell somebody, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Your sins are forgiven. You getting ready to get up off of that bed. Come down, church. I don't care what you went through last year. The mistakes you made last year. I hear the Holy Ghost say, get up off of that bed because be of good cheer. Hallelujah. Your sins are forgiven. But this all happens because of the right environment. The right people around him. The second thing that we see here is that Jesus is being challenged by the Pharisee spirit. You know, Pharisee is a spirit. The Pharisees, because you know they're not fair, you see. All right. And the Sadducees, okay, they said you see. And so brothers and sisters, uh, uh, he's being challenged on every hand by that religious spirit. Uh, mm -hmm, because religiosity wants you to stay crippled. Uh, they are happy and because the reason why uh, the spirit of Pharisee wants you to stay crippled uh, is because they know that your advancement uh, will shine a light on uh, their stagnancy uh, so they don't want you to break out the box and grow uh, they don't want you to become uh, non-religious and uh, begin to advance uh, so then they start saying just because you grow you compromising now Lord, I can't get no help here. It ain't that I'm compromising. It's just that I'm not crippled. Don't get it confused. I'm not crippled. I'm not compromised. Hallelujah. I'm out the box, but I'm still in this book. So, and so the next thing is, Bishop Young, I got to quit now. My time has expired. You coming to tell me to wrap up? Okay. Okay, and so the next thing is, we began to see Jesus uh, begin to pick and call disciples, and who is highlighted here is Matthew, who is called Levi, or Levi, who is referred to as Matthew. The Bible tells us that Matthew was a publican. He wasn't just a tax collector. He was a a publican. So the dichotomy between just a tax collector and a publican AJ is that you could be a Greek tax collector. You could be a Gentile tax collector. But in order for you to be a publican that means that you had to be a Jew. And so if you were a Jew then that means you grew up in the synagogue. That means you know the Torah, the Tamad or Tamud. You learned the laws and the prophets. You kept the Sabbath and you grew up and once you experience adulthood 
brotherhood, which is referred to as a bar mitzvah, then you have the right to leave the synagogue, do whatever you wanted to do. So here is a young man. Ha, Levi who grew up in church ha, in a religious environment called the synagogue ha, he got out of there because they were no longer able to satisfy him ha, they were no longer to keep his attention so he leaves and goes and get employed by the Roman government ha, or if we are historically correct, correct the Greco-Roman government ha, and he's employed to go back ha, y'all still here. I'm going to give you up and collect taxes from his own people. So the Pharisees couldn't stand him. They was not able to welcome him back in church because they considered him to be a traitor, a no good dog, uh, just a low down scoundrel. You done turned on us and you taking money from us and you pocketing some money and this is no good. But now Jesus says, I know the religious system don't want you. Come down church. I know the synagogue won't welcome you back. But Jesus said, come follow me. <laughs> oh my brothers and sisters because the reason why you are in this condition Levi is because of the environment you were in and you got to be real and honest some of these churches are dying and because the young people are leaving millennials and Gen Z's they're leaving by the droves and ain't got nothing to do with all they don't want God all these chaps don't don't know God. These children don't want to be saved. It ain't got nothing to do with their desire for God. It has everything to do with the skin they're in. It has everything to do with the environment you're producing. You bored. So what make you think they ain't bored? You wouldn't want to hear you preach. What make you think they want to hear you preach? They don't want to hear you sing. You don't want to hear you sing. What make you think? And so they leave but Jesus says, I'm not going to castigate you because I understand that it's an environment issue. You would stay there if the environment was right. And then finally, brothers and sisters, he goes into using these parables about cloths and garments. And then we now come down to the parable in which he deals with the wine skin. Can the church say amen? Uh, deal with the wineskin. What this really is, uh, it is it's really an issue uh, of economy. It's an issue of uh, business. Uh, it's an allegorical expression uh, that's dealing with business savvy uh, and business principles like uh, consumers and uh, uh, dealing with supply and demand because here it is a businessman who obviously has a wine business isn't that right so assistant pastor this man is stingy mm -hmm. he's being cheap and because of him being cheap and stingy he's getting ready to lose everything uh, and Jesus now is building on the parable or rather building this parable off of having this conversation with the Pharisees concerning him inviting Levi who was the, uh, the publican uh, uh, he's building off that cultural norms uh, because they understand that uh, if you're going to preserve the longevity of your business uh, you're going to need to make the necessary adjustments uh, to receive uh, new product if you're going to be able to preserve the longevity of your church you have to make the necessary investment to receive new wine and 
so pastor mince it's uh, an economic parable because uh, you're getting ready to lose everything sir uh, in this parable because uh, you're trying to be cheap uh, so what you've done is you poured the wine out of the wine skin uh, but instead of you throwing away that old wine skin Lamar uh, what you're doing is you're trying to make a bang for your buck uh, and you're trying to pour new wine in an old skin but not only are you getting ready to lose your skin but you're getting ready to lose your wine and your product and mess up your business and Jesus says you cannot receive the new wine revelation of grace as long as you still have an old skin law mentality and brothers and sisters Jesus says you got to change out the skin come church look at somebody and tell them you got to change your skin and you can't be stingy in this season you got to invest the necessary money to make sure you can receive new skin look at somebody and tell them neighbor neighbor I don't mean to bore you but tell them God's getting ready to give me a new skin there's another revelation of a dispensation called grace that represents this new wine but you've got to get rid of look at somebody and tell them get rid of the old skin that old skin mentality got to die that old skin mentality got to be crucified well brothers and sisters I'm closing when I tell you this that in that particular culture they made wine skins out of the skins of animals isn't that right look over and tell your neighbor they made wine skins out of the skins of animals find one more neighbor and tell that neighbor tell them they made wine skins out of the skins of animals well uh, the highest quality of wine skin uh, was made out of what kind of animal it was made out of lamb's skin ain't the lord all right and i'm closing when i tell him that if we're going to be able to receive the revelation of in order for you to receive new wine you got to kill your old wine skin if it's made out of the skin of lambs I want to tell you that I know a lamb that gave up his skin so that I may receive the new wine of grace oh Lord one Friday evening he died he gave up his skin on a hill called Calvary he died until the moon's blood pressure shot up and it drift away in blood he died until the earth began to shake like a drunken man oh he died until the sun refused to shine because the s-u-n could not shine while the s-o-n was on the cross dying he died for your sins and mine if you think i'm gonna run nail my feet if you think i'm gonna fight nail my hand but whatever you do don't lift me up he said if i be lifted up
from the earth I'll draw all men under me he died on Friday laid him down in a borrowed tomb but I heard the preacher say just like the orange juice bright early bright early Sunday morning he got up with all power tell your neighbor tell your neighbor I got a new skin y'all ain't happy tell him I got a new skin it is a new season it is a new day a fresh anointing is flowing my way tell one more neighbor tell one more neighbor say neighbor say neighbor tell them all things have become new all things have become new out with the old in with the new got a new mentality got a new mindset I came to tell the devil all things have become new tell your neighbor I got three words for you New, 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 all things new, all things new, all things new, all things new, new. it's new, 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 take three steps and say all things new, take three steps and say all things new. Let the devil know all things, all things, all things have become new. I'm over my time, but prophesy it to everybody around you and say all things are new. All things are new. All things are new. Time your neighbor. Put your hand on their shoulder and say, neighbor, neighbor. I don't know what you lost in your last season. Tell them don't cry over it. Don't worry about it. Tell them because all things. All things are new. All things are new. All things are new, 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 yeah, all things are new. Yeah, yeah. Baby, baby, don't cry in another day. Don't worry about it another day. Your marriage, your ministry. Your children, your health, your wealth. New, 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 new. New, 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 new. All things are new. All things are new. All things, all things. All things are new. Walk out of your seat and say, all things are new. Oh, all things are new. You ought to let
and the devil know uh, all things are new. Woo! I don't care what the rumor is. I don't care what they think they know. I don't care what they really do know. All things are new. All things are new. All things are new. It's a new skin. I got a new skin. We got 30 seconds and I gotta give it up. I said we got 30 seconds. And I want you to praise him for the new skin that you're in. On the count of three, I want you to dance in your new skin. On the count of three, I want you to dance in your new skin. I want you to praise him because what tried to kill you and thought it had killed you. I want you to go to praise him for it. One, two, one, two, three. Hey. The devil tried, God made it fail. God made it fail. God made it fail. Everything the devil tried, God made it fail. God made it fail. No, 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 no. God made it fail, he made it fail Everything that the devil tried God made it fail Are you making a 23 cause God made it fail?
would think the devil stole I got it back I got it back whoa, 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 whoa. I got it back God gave it back everything that the devil stole God gave it back I said God gave it back I said God gave it back hey God, oh, 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 God gave it back. Hey. Lord, we got the ball. Shot, 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 shot. I said everything is stolen. somebody God gave it back no you didn't say that look he tell somebody God gave it back I didn't have to fight for it I didn't I didn't have to fight for it God gave it back I didn't have to negotiate for it God gave it back for my shame he gave me double God gave it back How do you see yourself? About nine years ago, my wife was in the hospital for 30 some odd days. The doctor told her if she did not have a surgical procedure, she would die. And Bishop Young, I know you remember the Lord told us no surgery. Eat outside. The doctor was irate and told us if you're not going to have this surgery, you're going to have to get out of our hospital and find somewhere else. 
because if she doesn't have this surgery, she's going to die. My wife rose up in the bed and looked at the doctor and said, I won't die. She said, because I see myself living. She said, I don't see myself dead. I don't see myself sick. I don't see myself with a colostomy bag. I don't see myself hopping around. She said, I see myself well and whole. Ask your neighbor, how do you see yourself this year? And tell them you need to dance for the sight that you have. I see myself healed. I see myself whole. I see myself prosperous. Somebody, I see myself giving birth. The doctor told you you couldn't have a child, but I see myself being a mother. Hey! I see myself owning my own home. I see myself happy again. I see myself smiling again. He be He be a son of a holy. I see myself walking. I see myself talking. Yes. I see myself walking. Again, how do you see yourself? My, my, my. Oh, it won't always be. Oh, God. I know that sooner than later, it'll turn in my favor. Oh, yeah. Turn it around. Turn, turn it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turning around. 
new skin. Of young, if I may, sir. For your shame, God says He's getting ready to give you double this year. There is another work that is in your home area that will that has been summoning you. It's been gathering your attention. However, it's interesting because there is a transition that's getting ready to happen. I see an older lady that's getting ready to transition and she has no successor, she has nobody to pick up the helm and the Lord is strategically placing you in that particular space and place but Lord what am I to do with the headquarters what am I to do with the home for front God says I'm raising up individuals that you'll be able to trust, that you'll be able to rely on, that will bring honor and not divide. But as you transition, as you move, it's going to be a divine reversal because he is going to cause expansion like never before in that place you've been consistent you've been the spirit of the lord has been drawing and god just wants to remind you that it's him he is the one who has ordained and anointed you and given you the strategies that you can walk right in you don't have to build this up you don't have to build it up god says it's going to come to you and it won't be a battle, it won't be a fight, it won't be any legalities. God's going to cause you to be positioned so the place where you will give legal advice. You will be able to give structure for what's getting ready to happen. But Bishop, I want you to be encouraged. The best of your life has not passed. All that you've invested, all that you have poured in, and all that you have even suffered, God told me to tell you, I'm going to give you double this year for all of your labor, double finances, double home, double ministry, double honor, because he's restoring this youth to you, even as the eagle. And I pray for your strength, but more importantly, I pray for your heart. Hallelujah. I pray for the heart of you, Bishop. I'm going to touch you on your shoulders because I don't disrespect your anointing. Yes, he be all The heart, the heart, the heart of the Bishop. Who encourages the encourager. Who pours into the one who does all the pouring. Who looks out for the one that looks out for all of us. Oh, yes, so that time. He's going to serve you with his whole heart. His heart will not be fragmented. His heart will not be shattered, but his heart will be whole. His heart will be whole. And even this body, hold your shot, hold up this body. Woo! Hold up this body. Hold up this body. Hold up this body. Up this body. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. There'll be no health concerns, aches and quakes, and what's going on in this body. Oh, hold your shot. Come on. He's giving you a fresh wind. And all is well in Jesus' name. Somebody open up your mouth and praise him. Hallelujah. Every time I turn around, the Lord is blessing me. Oh, Lord. Every time I turn around, the Lord is blessing me. Yeah, every time I turn around, the Lord is blessing me. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He blessed me every time I give him praise. 
come on, we gotta go, I know. The Lord is blessing me. Oh Lord, every time I give him praise, while my hands are raised, he's blessing me. Oh, every time I give God praise, he's blessing me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to minister to this pastor here we just met man of God God said you're in the middle of a turn right now your ministry your home your business acquisitions God said you're in the middle of a turn your ministry under the bullshit God is overhauling it He's changing the skin you're in. I so. Oh, Jesus. He's changing the skin you're in. He's giving you a new outlay, a new look, a new, a fresh vision, transition. And those that promised you things concerning covering and investments and all of that stuff like that concerning ministry. God says, I don't worry about the unfulfilled promise, the inconsistencies. God says, I planted you there because I knew you were a man of vision and strength. And so run with the vision. There's provision that is coming. And embrace the new. Embrace the difference. Don't allow yourself to be boxed into one particular thing. Everything in your life is getting ready to flourish and be productive because this yes this year is going to have a ripple effect even in home and even concerning the business that God has placed in you. All of it is going to have a ripple effect, positive ripple effect because of this yes to what God is doing. Eyes haven't seen, of course, God is making you a seat holder and a general in that area in which you are in but that's only the beginning somebody shout glory to God come on somebody shout glory to God hallelujah I want you brothers and sisters to prepare your hearts and minds to sow sow along with us today thank you Jesus every time I turn around the Lord is blessing me every time I turn around. The Lord is blessing me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Every time I turn around, He's blessing me. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, blessing me. I need about 10 of us to trust the Lord sacrificially with a seed of $100. Um, I don't want uh, to make it drudgery or anything like that. I, uh, I believe that your spirit bears witness, amen? And um, we don't give um, out of emotion or sensationalism we give because of the principle so this is still the first week of the new year that means that the first thing that you've done this week is sowed seed Ooh. this is your first fruit these are your first fruit seeds that we're giving this week. Amen. So think about what you're setting your year up for. Somebody shout harvest. Thank you. I need uh, 10 of us that will trust the Lord today with this seed to stand to your feet along with me. Um, we don't give to be seen, but I do believe you should be seen giving. 
Everything I have in my life, I can trace back to a seed. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, man of God. Thank you, man of God. Thank you, Pastor. I can trace back to a seed. Thank you, Pastor. increase that's coming to this man of God. Oh, yes. Thank you for the divine healing and wholeness. Thank you for complete restoration. And everything that you missed, the missed opportunity that you think that you missed, God's getting ready to reward you. He's getting ready to reward you. I see monies that have been held up Maybe some form of held up money. God's getting ready to release that for you this year. Woo! So that you can be the blessing that you desire to be. So that you can provide the way you desire to provide without struggle over time. Be of soul. Hey! Woo! Shetaya In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Everything we can trace back to a seed. Amen. I want you to know that the seed that leaves your hand will never leave your life. Isn't that right? Thank you. Amen. We have the, moda the modalities of giving. Uh, here, use my, uh, I have a wallet somewhere in my bag. Use my, uh, the black card. Well, I got two black ones. Let me show you which one to use. No, the color of the card happens to be black. Amen. I'm not, I'm not there yet. Huh? Yeah. Woo. My, 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 my. I believe, I believe there are two more of you that really need to sacrifice with this seed today. Just trust the Lord. He gives seed to the sowers, bread to the eater. You know, one of the words for money is currency. And I believe money has the ability to flow in our direction. Amen. Did I give it to you? Did I give you this? Is my walk back? No, unless you put it there. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, praise God. I want you to lift that seed up to God in your right hand. We give God what's right and not what's left. I'm going to pray for everybody, but because I specifically felt this in my spirit concerning this seed, I want to pray, pray a special blessing upon those that are sacrificing on this level. I want to pray a special blessing. Father, I thank you that one of your names in Scripture is God of the Harvest. And so, Father, we thank you now that you are the God of the harvest. You are the God that gives harvest. And so, Father, I pray that by the end of this conference, we will see a harvest on all of our seed. But more specifically, I pray that what we set in our hearts to do concerning this seed, that we will have a harvest concerning this seed. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth, we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Saints of God, come from all over and so. Amen. So, do you have my wallet in your pocket? Okay. Thank God. Because you know you put my stuff in your pocket. Say, Pastor, I didn't have that hundred, but I'm gonna sow a jubilee seed. I'm gonna sow a ju sow a jubilee seed. I want you to stand to your feet if you're gonna give that fifty dollars today. If you're gonna trust them on that level, I want you to stand because I want to pray concerning that particular seed. Wonderful Jesus, thank God, thank you so much. Never be embarrassed of your seed because let me tell you something. The reason why you give is because you will never be broke again.
Father, I thank you for those that are sowing this seed specifically concerning Jubilee. We thank you, Father, for liberty. Thank you for freedom. We thank you that there is a level of freedom that is attached to this level of obedience. And we thank you for overflow and increase in Jesus' name. Come, saints, come and sow that seed. Wonderful Savior. Thank God. I want you to get the closest thing that you can, brothers and sisters, to $25. Closest thing you can to $25. If you have $25, I want you to sow that. I want you to get the closest thing you can to $25. Thank the Lord. I said, thank the Lord. Look at somebody and tell them, if you only felt what's coming in your life, you'd be rejoicing right now. Lord, have I want you to stand to your feet with a seed that is closest thing that you have to $25, if not $25, and I want you to come. I want you to make haste as I am praying. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you now. I thank you now for the saints that are giving. The liberal heart will be fed. And Father, we're not giving necessarily out of abundance because there are other things we could be doing with this money. But in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, for increased harvest, overflow, and abundance in every area of our lives. Thank you that our needs are met. Hallelujah. Our needs are met, and we give you glory for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Come, let's receive Elder Hicks at this time. In Jesus' name. celebrate the ministry of Pastor Johnny Duran Brown. Can we do so? Let's let him know we appreciate the anointing. Come on, a little louder than that. Come on, make some noise. Let God know that we appreciate him. Thank you for being such a willing vessel. And these are not just people who are sharing, men of God who are sharing. They're going to be with us. He's going to be back with us Friday as Bishop is sharing. So we honor that as well. Amen to God. Well, listen, we're moving. We're getting ready to transition. Were not you blessed today in our midday manner? Amen. Glory to God. Somebody say tonight. I can't hear you. Shout tonight. Listen, tonight we will beginning. We will begin our worship services with intercession. Inter excuse me. I can't even talk this morning. Intercession at 7 p.m. And we want you to be here and in place. Spread the word that we'll be starting at 7 p.m. with intercession. And then we'll break forth into worship. And tonight our guest preacher is Bishop Anthony Gilliard. And he's going to share the heart of the Lord. And our guest psalmist will be Pastor Jashana Bellamy. Isn't it wonderful? Not too long ago, and TWC can attest to this, not too long ago, she came to TWC and preached the roof off of the church. And she was the start of a revolution for the ministry. Amen. She was, she was the start in the history from what I'm told, the first female minister, first pe female preacher to ever mount the rostrum. And God has opened that door, and so we celebrate that as well. We're getting ready to move. Listen, quickly and expeditiously, the staff is awaiting us. The staff is awaiting us over in the next section for our lunch. And so we're not going to give a uh, benediction, but we're going to do a prayer of transition. And we want to expeditiously move over to where we are going. And, of course, we want our leaders, uh, Pastor Mintz, Bishop Young, Bishop Bellamy, his wife, Pastor, of course, AP, Minister Hall, all of you all, Pastor, who's in clergy, to be seated. And um, uh, yes, and uh, Elder Carlos Tillman will lead you in that direction. Let's stand. We're leaving. Father, bless us again as we transition from one place to the other. 
Thank you for your presence that we felt. We give you glory and praise. Bless the food that we are getting ready to partake in. In Jesus' name, we are grateful. Everyone say amen. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. And we're moving. Amen.